Hello and welcome to Forex.Academy, your number one website for Forex and crypto education and analysis. In today's edition, we're going to be looking at the basics of statistical analysis. This is part three in the series. Part three includes why you should know the normal distribution. What is distribution? A distribution comes from our need to measure and qualify objects or items when the potential number of elements is too large to evaluate one by one. It is hardly practical to have a record of all the heights, weights, races, clothes and shoe sizes of every person. It is impossible to have a record of all possible stock or forex pairs or prices. Of course, we already have historical records, but we cannot have a record of future prices. What we want and need is information about these and other items. It would be ideal to have valuable collective information about the properties of data instead of an endless list of prices, heights and weights. This is where histograms come in. Let's imagine that we are to record daily price changes from the current open to the previous day open. We could see that some days the price seldom moves, while on other days, larger and larger movements occur. Let's only plot 10 possible ranges, 5 on the positive side and 5 on the negative side. They will range from 0 to 1%. All changes bigger than 1% will be included in the next range. We have made a histogram of price changes. It is a very coarse approach to prices, but it shows useful information. We see that it is more common to see small changes rather than large changes. We could refine it using more bins. This is how it looks using 40 bins. Using fewer bins, we can perceive the same distribution than using more bins. We lose information, but if we choose the bin distribution appropriately, binning is quite convenient. The normal distribution. Carl Friedrich Gauss was thought to discover the normal distribution, also called the Gaussian distribution, although 100 years earlier it was described by Abraham de Morve. Still, his discovery remained obscured until after Gauss published it. It is considered the most useful distribution in modeling due to the fact that many phenomena follow the normal distribution. Measures of height, weight, intelligence levels closely follow the normal distribution. Also, the normal distribution is the limiting form of other distribution types. The Central Limit Theorem One of the key statistical applications involving the Gaussian distribution had to do with how the averages distribute. That is, if we take several random samples of collection data, the averages of the samples will approximate the normal distribution, regardless of the distribution of the original data. This is very powerful because it allows us to generalize about future prices from the averages computed using samples of historical data. Properties of the normal distribution The mean The most obvious measure of the normal distribution is its average or mean. The mean tells us the most common value of the distribution. If the distribution were about prices, it would tell us the fair to value asset. The standard deviation. The other significant measure of the normal distribution is the standard deviation. Computing it is a bit more complicated than the average, but it is rather easy as well. The standard deviation tells us how far from the center on average its elements are. One, we measure the distance of every individual component from the mean. Two, since the differences may be positive or negative, we square this value to take away the sign, creating a collection of squared differences. 3. We take the average of the squared differences. The result is called the variance. But why n1? Well, that has to do with the fact that we are dealing with samples, not the whole population. By dividing by n1, we will make the value less optimistic on short samples. As the sample size grows, the value variance gets closer and closer to the population variance. Step 4. We take the square root of the sample variance, and the result is the standard deviation. Normal probabilities. Now that we have our data, prices, trade returns, and so forth, we can use the normal distribution to extract useful information. If the distribution, for instance, were the returns of our strategy, we would arrive at two main values, the average profit and the standard deviation of the profits. What can that tell us about what to expect from our future returns? The normal distribution is well known, so we have known values are statistically distributed. We know that 68.2% of the values lie within 1 SD from the mean, 95.4% of the values will lie within the 2 SD, and 99.7% of them within the 3 SD. Let's say as an exercise that your mean gain is $100 within an SD of 60. What can we expect from our future profits? We can anticipate that 64% of the time, our trades will lie between $40 and $160. 13.6% of the time, we will make between $20 and $40. 13.6% between $150 and $210. 2.1% of the time, your strategy will lose $20 to $80. But also, 2.1% of the time, you will gain from $210 to 
Usually the distribution of gains and losses is not normally distributed, therefore we should not expect the percentages shown here. As an exercise you can do at home, Google about Chevy Chev's inequality for a more general probability scaling. If you enjoyed the video then please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below about anything you would like us to discuss in future or if you have any questions about this particular video. Have a great day.